Hey, how's it going guys? JC Direct here and today we have a spectate game on Quaz top lane. That's because you guys voted in the last video that top lane at 32% was the highest vote and second highest was live commentary. I read all you guys' comments, I know that we got suggestions for Quaz and we got suggestions for Boxer Pete's Trindamere. And personally, we have an oversaturation of Trindamere content on this channel anyway, so I thought we'd do something more diverse and go for a different top laner or someone that's like the highest ranking you can possibly find and obviously we'll learn a lot more from him. So we went for Quaz and we I chose... I chose Swain because that's his one trick, that is his main champion, so also I hope that I have the OP.GG, Runes and Mastery, Skill Order, Item Build, all of that should be on the screen so you guys can have a good idea of what he is aiming to do. And we're gonna see, he comes to lane late, uh, a minute 55, that, that is as if he fake leashed. And, but then you guys, if you are smart about it as the enemy laner, you'll know that the Quaz... He came into lane with full mana, mana, meaning he down. probably did not leash, it was a fake leash. So you guys, if you're smarter, you can one-up him by doing that. So the second thing I noticed is he's auto-attacking to match the cannons push, to keep the push. lane not so pushed, not so shoved, so that it stays in the middle. Because as Swain, if you get so shoved to the tower, you're pretty screwed because you won't be able to see us properly. Here. So that's something that I, I picked up on just by looking at this so far. So we're going to watch a bit more and I'm also going to listen in on him. You guys probably can't hear him just because I don't want two people talking at the same time. It gets really distracting. So if there's anything important he says, I'll relay it back to you guys. It's good. He's getting chunked and Lee is coming topside. So the first thing I noticed also is that he started E. I think uh, what, what I saw from the OP.GG is when he... Faces up against a so melee matchup, he goes for Q first. When he goes for a range matchup, he actually starts E first. Uh, after like, that, the skill sequence is always the same. Put one point in each, Q. E, Q, W, and after that, he'll max Q. Always max Q, no matter what movies. matchup. But the way he starts is nice slightly man. different. So, wow, nice. that's... That is really well played. I have to say that that's really well played by Quaz. That W is just on point. So mechanics is really top notch. That's I mean, uh, from a one thousand LP challenger, you can't really expect any less than perfection, right? I mean, obviously he will still make mistakes, but oh what God. I noticed is that from we watching a few Quaz <laughs> replays, I haven't seen this particular video before, but I have seen in the past that he likes to build Rod of Ages every go time, the, no uh, matter what. Wand. And I like this a lot. Oh, okay, okay. he goes for a blasting wand first. That's actually blood. pretty good. I think he actually prioritized, say, if he was to build the anyway. Catalyst which is the, yeah, a the component of the Rod of Ages, he always likes to go a health crystal. So if you were uh, like short on gold and you want to decide between mana crystal or health crystal, always go for the health one. The reason being is because if you can control the amount of mana you use, you only need to use as much mana as your passive gives you. So you really don't need the extra mana pool. It really doesn't help you in terms of fighting and trading, but the health crystal will. So if, if you're ever in that kind of slight macro decision to things. go for it, just go for the health crystal that's what i noticed from watching a previous video from quaz as well so something to take note now. of and also anytime i use on cooldown i gotta be careful of him going really hard on me for a trade also you have to take note that he's always auto attacking he's always auto attacking just to match the cannon and if he's up against a matchup where he's bullying the other person he'll control the amount of auto attacks he does but against someone like cannon that can ineb inevitably shove him into the tower really quickly he wants to keep up those auto attacks non-stop while harassing the cannon from max range and that way it kind of puts him in a good position in terms of lane dominance and also in terms of keeping the minion wave controlled at the same time. He's doing that like a really good job. So this probably applies to every single mage or spellcaster out there is just to control the minion wave with your auto attacks because especially someone like Swain that doesn't have reliable wave clear with his abilities and can't really see us that well under tower. He can't afford to be shoved under tower because that's the worst thing a Swain can experience is to be shoved under the turret because then he'll have to be forced to use mana in order to CS, and he can't afford that because it's not enough like mana from his passive right now. to allow that to happen, basically. Seems good, man. So he seems to be going for those max range short trades, and he's actually doing such a good job that he doesn't get poked back from the AD cannon, which is pretty impressive. He's He just landed two E's on the cannon without any retaliation. Although the cannon is actually still slightly over leveled compared to Quaz, just because the cannon's hard shoving into the, into the Swain. But the thing is, 
he's doing a really good job controlling the wave to the point where it never crashes into the tower. That's the key right now is the Swain is able to control it to the point where it never crashes into the tower and he's also able to poke the cannon at will while not taking any damage at the same time, like any return poke from the cannon. And he also threw in an auto attack onto the cannon. That's, that's pretty impressive, you know? I mean, I'll have the OP.GG up, so you guys probably know that he obviously versus the top challengers of NA, so these guys are no joke. These guys are, like, top of the line, the best players ever. And so he's pointing out that the enemy Gragas is dead. He can probably play a bit further up. And But then he also noticed that the TF is available, like his ult is available, so it's sort of risky, but then he's also full health, so Should he feels that it's that safe too, and he's confident in doing this. Here. Not that the TF, or the TF already used his ult at bot lane, so that's, that's that anyway. But yeah, I noticed for most of the time, in terms of fighting a melee champion, he's able to bully them to the point where he can just shove them under the turret all the time. But against ranged matchups, he likes to do this where he controls the minion wave in the middle. And I thought it's more interesting for you guys to watch him verse a very tough matchup like a cannon, uh, AD cannon. Obviously, that's that's not a joke of a lane, you know, he's a lane bully. So that's probably more interesting to watch then for you, to, you guys to watch a Swain bully out, say, a melee champion like a Nasus or a Jarvan or, you know, whatever. Also, if you guys like this kind of video, please let me know so I can make more of these and also suggest maybe down in the comments below who exactly you want to see in which lane and, you know, what champion. I probably won't cover Trindamir just because I have plenty of Trindamir videos on the channel for you guys to watch anyways. So yeah, Gukwaz is saying that he's missing a lot of CS, but to be honest, that's how most high elo players feel is every time they miss a few CS, they're like, I could be doing this a lot better. And that CS could have costed me, you know, the slightest fraction of the game. And sometimes that, that little slightest fraction means not buying a certain item and not having the item available in a team fight. And you basically just lost the game off of just dying from very, like the tiniest bit of damage that you could have just needed to kill or finish off the enemy team, but you couldn't and you died instead. So... I guess that's that's just every little bit of CS actually still counts really it's really important still at the highest level. Obviously lower level it's a lot more forgiving, everything's more forgiving, mistakes are more forgiving, all of that, but uh, a challenger very different and the pace of the game should be a lot quicker as well. Because most of you guys will know that as you guys climb the ladder, say in the bronze and silver games, you guys are getting like 50 minute games all the time, like 40, 50 minute, one hour games. Like, this happens very commonly. And then when you get to, say, gold, the games might be, you know, 40 minutes to 30 minutes. Then plat will be, like, 30-minute games. And then when you get to diamonds, around, say, 20 to 35 minutes. And then as you go higher, it just... The the games just become a be lot faster. There, like, it closes out a lot faster. The game pace is a lot more different. So. In the bank. Well, he just used all his mana there. I'll do back into this. So the such plan such here was because it was crashing into his tower, he used his ult to counter harass the cannon away, chunk him out because he knows that he has teleport. So he's going to do that really quickly and just come back as fast oh, as he can. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to teleport onto that minion, which is what he ultimately wanted and also to get his Rod of Ages. So I guess he took all of that into consideration, having the enough gold for to buy the Rod of Ages and also to teleport. So that was his plan. But I think it backfired because he could have been using his teleport he's here, so... TP for a kill doesn't really matter, and I think they're gonna kill that anyway. He's gonna push bottom, but can he falls behind out of this? But as you guys can see, he, he's like a CSing monster. He's at 99 CS at 10 minutes, that is really impressive for... In terms of CS against an AD cannon, that's just... This is completely mind-blowing, guys. I don't think I can ever do that. As a Trindamir against the AD Cannon, but obviously I am melee, so there is a big difference. But look how fast he's actually taking this tower. He's controlling the wave perfectly, and he's able to punish the the cannon TP like just immensely, like so fast. You wouldn't expect a Swain to be able to push this fast and this efficiently, but he's able to do it. He's able to wave clear. He's able to push towers, and he's able to do all of that while having you know full health and. Still a decent chunk of mana to clear out the minion wave. So he throws in the bird and then he uses W on the melee minions. I noticed that's that's the way he wave clears for Swain, I guess, if he wants to do immediate wave clear. So that's something important to note if you're trying to control the wave, is to know how to wave clear as well. That's probably the most important thing in lane as a caster, second to mechanics or fighting. 
So in terms of the streaming right now, it's a red bar, meaning that there's no audio. So I can't even listen to Quas myself. That's why I think it's more consistent if I was to have the game sound or the Twitch TV sound, if I was to have the stream sound off so that you guys can just hear me and it'll be more consistent than sometimes hearing Quas and sometimes not hearing it. And he's also, if we're both talking at the same time, it gets a bit distracting. So that's what, that's the format I've went with. If you guys think I should change it, if you guys think I should have them talking at the same time as me, uh, let me know in the comments below or if I should keep it this way or if I should add music. Maybe I will add music actually in this video. I wouldn't know until I start editing. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. And also, if you guys like this sort of content, let me know as well so that I can make more of these. This is just a trial run. This is the first time I'm trying to make a video like this. So hopefully you guys like it. And if you guys do, then I'll make more of these. I'll make it for either different champions, different lanes, and then we'll just break it down and we'll see how it goes. So right now I can see that bot lane has lost their tower and in, in return Quaz has actually taken the top tower really quickly. I'm pretty sure that the enemy ADC is going to rotate top because that's what they would always do really. So right now the Swain, right now Quaz is actually freezing. This is how you freeze, you pull the minions back into the bush and then you let the next minion wave crash in just like so. After that you can after that, you can just thin out the wave, but you just basically want to make it Okay, actually he's not even freezing it. He just broke the freeze like that. Cuz now there's 5 minions to 4, so it looks like he's just hard pushing now. But that's actually Okay, actually it makes sense now. It makes complete sense because this is the first time I'm watching it. So what he was doing there was gathering them all up and then using his W on as many minions as possible. And that's actually more efficient to wave clear as a Swain. For Trindamir, you only do that kind of tactic if you want to freeze. So that's something that's very interesting and noteworthy actually. So as a caster, you want to bunch them up. So you do the little freeze trick and then you bunch them up and then you kill everything. And as for Trindamir, you only do that if you want to freeze, so that's noted. He, he can actually kill the Lucian, I think. He's hiding in the bush, being really sneaky, and he's going to flank the... Oh, there's an army here. Okay, he has to back off, so... Quaz knows. He knows that he can't 3v1. Yeah, he has to flash out of that. It's a good flash, but I think he might... Oh, is that Lee? Oh, okay, the Lee's gonna save his life. Pretty good then. That's actually pretty good. And all of this was done because he got that CS. He has one kill, you know, that's not going to buy him anything. That's 300 gold. But the fact that he has perfect CS or near perfect CS just allows him to buy those items and that's enough to do enough damage and to survive. And if he didn't have those items, I don't think he would have survived that. Say if you were a regular Swain player with 90 CS at this timing, you probably would just have the Rod of Ages. And that's about it. Or you might not even, like, you, yeah, you might just have the Rod of Ages. And that just wouldn't be enough to survive that. So I guess he did a sort of zoning TP. I can't hear him right now, so I wouldn't know what he's thinking about. He's, I see two bot. So right now he's hiding in this blind spot. Uh, I'm actually not sure what he's trying to do here. At this point, I look like, it looks like he's just slow pushing it into the cannon. So he pushes the top lane out and then backs into the river. Maybe tries to take the scuttle or just joins the team fight at the dragon river. Or I don't know why he's zooming into himself, that's a bit strange. Okay, I guess he's not going to participate in that fight. He's, he's opting to just go straight back to the top tower and defend it. And he's warning his team that cannon's alive and has TP. So, okay, that's interesting. I guess, I guess if he was to roam... He thought that he wouldn't get anything out of it and wouldn't have made a difference. And that he would have lost a lot of minions at top and actually lost the top tower as well. So I guess that was... It, that is worth if he actually wouldn't have gotten anything. Maybe he'll get a cannon kill. So he waited for the cannon to lightning rush. And then he goes in with a full combo and actually blows the cannon flash. That's pretty good and pretty sneaky on his part actually. He looped around into the bush and just surprised the cannon. Also take note of the way he placed his bird and his W. It actually is pretty strategic. My team's pushing bottom now. With a herald. So 
So I see that he goes back to here. top lane and then pushes Take top the lane out, and then he's trying to TP. So the cannon might, yeah, yeah the damage. cannon actually gets the cancel off. So that's pretty well, unfortunate for. Just not too bad. It's pretty unfortunate for the Swain. Cool. And uh, wait, when you yeah, cancel so, TP, so. goes to a four minute cooldown. That's like a full cooldown, I believe. You know how if yeah, you were to TP to and cancel. if you were to cancel it, you get a reduced that, cooldown. So four minutes. I think four minutes is the reduced cooldown. I think five minutes might be the full TP duration. I'm not actually 100% sure on that one, but I'll probably check oh, later oh. on to find out. We lost a lot of that. Okay, that's actually something that's very interesting is he used his Q to slow the cannon. So he placed the Q right on top of the cannon. And then after that, he placed the W just where the Good cannon's right, slightly up. about to go. And because he's already slowed, it's a lot easier to land that W. So that's like a little bit of a Swain mechanic there that for, as in terms of chasing, you, you use that. You basically use your Q to slow them, like just throw it right on top of them and then use your W to throw it where they're going. So that's that's something to note for those players that don't play Swain and are trying to pick them up or trying to pick Swain up. That's something you can know as well. You want to control the lane uh, with your auto attacks and then you also want to use your Q as your primary focus of damage. You, the E is really just one point there for utility, really. And then you max Q and then W. The, the Q and W is your main damage, your bread and butter. And your E is just to amplify damage utility right there. So yeah, very nice. He uses W just to do damage to all the minions. And then he Qs and then I guess uh, his ult is just... Wow, okay. He just got destroyed, that cannon. Good pick. He didn't even need to ult. That's the thing. And all of this while maintaining perfect CS, so he's really just staying in lane for the most part, and then hovering around. Sometimes he might teleport, but really it could just be to bait the cannon in. Or actually, it's probably unintended, but in terms of this game, I don't think here. he's pulled off any like great teleports just yet, except for the first one, which was just to do. control the lane. So the idea was there where he would do a really hard trade, where he knows he's about to buy a really top-notch item like Rod of Ages, like a power spike. So he'll go for the trade, he'll use all his mana, then he'll back this, off completely, go, a, go to the fountain, a, buy his item, and re and then teleport back a, onto a minion. Well, at least that's what he tried to do. So that's something you can do to just straight up win the lane with teleport. And you can do that always at the highest level, even as Trindamir guys. You can actually do that. Do a trade, you know, maybe, maybe not blow your ult, but then after that, you'll teleport, get full health, get your refillable back, get your item spike, and then teleport onto a lane minion. Make and then after that, you just basically won the lane. Vision. Oh, that's a pretty nice kick. Just handed straight to the Swain. Evolution, dude. Holy shit. He's dead, I think. Yeah, I got him with the last one. Nice. He actually tanked that for so long. That's actually pretty impressive how long he tanked it. Him, All because he had just like really good macro play and nice. just a Kills solid item bad. build and that just allowed him to be super strong. He basically tanked the entire team for just forever. And this is going to allow his team to pretty much clean yeah. up if that Kasten had any mana. That would have been a f the freest cleanup. But it's just it's just plays like this that allow him to basically climb to the very top of the ladder and just be pretty much the best player on NA. It's just, just his macro game, his macro decisions are just on point. His teleports, maybe not so great this, this game, but you know what? what it's else? the ideas behind it is still there. No, more, the idea no, behind it is health. still there and it's still very yeah, valid, so... Maybe he, sh he does Usually it a lot better in his that. other games. So this game, otherwise, like, just take away the dousing, fact that the idea behind these teleports is what you guys should be taking away. And between that 4,000 gold, they could get like Hexdrink or Illusion or whatever, and then I'll be in trouble because I won't be doing enough damage. So I guess but he I WQs the gonna back wave great. now. So I think Leandro's going to pay off for us. And then he just finishes off the rest yeah, with auto attacks. The is from all the so it's early. pretty important to also watch out for how he wave clears. So, so he's doubling the back wave now, oh, and then he's queuing the front wave and just auto attacking the front wave. So that's actually and maybe towards mid game, that's how he wave clears. But in terms of early game, he does here. the opposite where he uses the Q on the back wave and the W on the front wave. Or use the Q on, to be honest, the entire wave. Oh, he's back, you know. So I guess he switches it up a little bit, but. Uh, just take notes of how he's wave clearing. I don't know if that was the most efficient, but in terms of being a top laner, it's really important to know how to wave clear so that you can push as fast and most efficient as possible, and then you either go somewhere else or you can keep pushing. 
but the important thing is that you can always keep pushing it really yeah. fast and that's what makes split pushing efficient or makes split pushing work is if you can do that nice wow he's, he's gonna what's happening well that's like the best timing ever <laughs> he just completely destroyed the tf got a f not a f wow okay wow the fade away as well just a flash just really good timing really good catch he was just in position to do it, really hyper aware and just able to capitalize on that TF. Now he can just walk in. He can literally just walk into the enemy team and not have there. a worry in the world because of how strong he is. Look at what he's doing. Just like that, and then he just Zonias. And he's not gonna die for it too because he has the macro game down pat. Loop around, he knows yeah, what he's doing and be you know, it's just the strength of having really good CS guys is just practice that guys practice split pushing practice wave clearing practice controlling the wave so that it doesn't crash into the tower so that you can actually get all of that cs and then after that just become a monster Close. in terms Close. of team fights we did it no flash on this guy you guys kill him and swain's just so tanky when he gets uh when he gets to this point at the 20 something it. minute mark and he gets Baron really good cs though. he just becomes super tanky and just yeah, really hard to deal it. with no matter what champion you play on the enemy team, Swain yeah, will just be pretty good against everyone Definitely in general. But I think the main problem with Swain is that he can't see us under tower. It's really hard and he has so many issues in lane early on, depending on the matchup really. But he played that so well against the cannon, so props to him. I can see why he is, you know, top of the ladder. Also, I didn't know that Caitlyn can actually shoot from there. Caitlyn can shoot from outside the Baron pit, that's how much range she has, oh, Jesus. Oh, they're trying to steal it. Oh, Lee Sin gets it now. though, pretty nice. Or actually with Kazuri TP, we don't have to get the fuck out. Ah, oh, feels good, man. Wow, they actually gave it to the Leaps Swain. The on it. Oh, this guy's fucking trolling. Wow, this game <laughs> is completely over at this point. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to skip to the very end, but <laughs> at this <laughs> point, the thinking? game is just GG'd right, right now. Well, it works for us. All all Quaz has to do is just group with his team and just run it down mid. Uh, that's pretty much it. Also can get a dragon, why not? Get some objectives, just go home, buy get items, regroup, here. and that's it. It's just get, game uh, over. Voice staff components. And actually, that's it's as if he heard me. That's exactly what he's doing. So in terms of the build, right, guys? In terms of the build, he likes to always buy his... He always likes to buy Doran Shield right now. Uh, I'd say because the Doran Shield got nerfed, what he used to buy is the Doran's Ring. So he normally buys the Doran's Ring before Doran Shield got OP. And then after that, he always rushes the Rod of Ages no matter what. No matter what the matchup is, he'll always rush Rod of Ages. In terms of runes, he will change the Magic Resist runes that you guys see at the front at the start of the video. I'll probably post that up again right now. But in terms of runes, the... He likes to run an MR Quint or a Armor Quint, so that's the only thing that changes if, depending on the matchup. If it's an AD matchup, he'll change the Quint into Armor. If it's an AP matchup, he'll change it into Magic Resist. And I guess against Kennen, he just defaults into Magic Resist because he doesn't know if it's going to be AD or AP. So he just pretends it's AP, which, uh, which is a pretty safe bet because Kennen, no matter what, will do magic damage either way. I don't like being split, honestly. It's so cute. After that, he'll get he'll get Zonias no, pretty much always. Zonias into Leandris, and that is a stable. After that, he'll go into Zonias, right? But then he'll either choose Void Staff or Leandris, depending on how much magic resist the enemy team has. If they have a lot of magic resist, he'll go for Void Staff. If they have a little bit, he'll go for Leandris. Wow. And after that, it's he hasn't recently actually finished a game where he went to six items, so it's either going to be a Death Cap oh, or a Rylize. That is my. That's my educated guess. Well, you guys can watch the team fight while all this is happening. No but from what I've seen, gonna... from looking at other top nice. rated Swain players, what they do is they could either buy as a last item yeah, Banshee's Veil, which is an AP button. item right now. They could go for Spirit Visage <laughs> okay. or Abyssal Mask. The Abyssal Mask actually amplifies your damage overall 
and all you of your teammates will have amplified arc, damage. So even though it's strictly a tank like, magic resist item, it's still pretty good on Swain because he's always as a front line. He's a front line mage basically. So in that sense, that is the build, guys. That's pretty much the full rounded out build. The skill order, runes, masteries, item build. I think I covered all of that, guys. So thank you so much for watching to the very end. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. I'm pretty sure you learned a thing or two because I did. I learned quite a few things, especially because I also did a little bit of research. So if you guys like this sort of content, please let me know in the comments below. And if you don't like it, tell me why and what I should do instead. And also... If you guys enjoy this content, yeah, if you guys love my channel, please show some support. If you haven't already, subscribe, like, comment, you know, all of that good stuff. And then also you the could even share it with your friends kill, or online community. That probably helps the most. If you guys do these kind of things, my channel will definitely grow. And then I'll continue to keep making videos. It'll just be a win-win situation. Thank you guys so much for watching to the very end. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.